Hey guys, my name is James from Tech MNO, and we have another very special video for you guys. Before I had this channel, my family and friends always ask me what phones or any types of gadgets are the best for them because I'm sort of the techie guy. And not to brag, some of them love the things or gadgets I suggested to them. And as we celebrate our first year anniversary since we've uploaded our very first video, I asked the up and coming and the best tech YouTubers who are my friends also to share their tips and advice on how to decide or pick your own smartphone that will cater to your needs and so that you will have the best purchase decision. But before we begin, if you enjoy this type of content, click that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to get notified when there's a brand new video. With that out of the way, let's start the best tips and advice from my tech YouTuber friends. And here we go. Hello everyone, this is Vlogs of an Idol, my name is Joen. On getting the perfect smartphone for me, the first thing I look for is its chipset because it greatly affects the overall performance of the phone. If its processor is great, then most probably the phone will be able to have a lot of features, play high graphic games, last about a couple of years, and generally run smoothly. Partnered with a sufficient amount of RAM, mostly 4 gigabytes of RAM would do, but if you want the phone to really last, then you would go for 6GB of RAM or above. In terms of storage, try to always lean on at least 128GB of storage. But if the 64GB has an expendable one, then it can work too. Now lastly, this one is pretty subjective, but I prefer my phones really small and light. Your phone must be comfortable to your hands because you'll be holding it for long periods of time, so you want to feel relaxed when using it. So those are my tips, guys. Thanks, James, for having me, and see you in the next video. Hey guys, my name is Mastercard, and... In this video, I'm going to be telling you some of the few things I consider when picking out a new phone. For me, when somebody comes up to me and say they need to get a new phone, one of the first questions I ask them is, what is your budget? I think the budget is the most important thing because if you want to get a phone, you need to know how much you're ready to spend on that phone. And after you know your budget, then you can go into market research and do survey on what phones fit into that budget. Next, I'd like to ask, are you more conscious about getting an Android phone or an Apple phone? If you want to get an iPhone, then there are few phones you need to look at in your budget range. But if you're looking at Android phone, there's a wide range of phones that will fit into your category from different manufacturers like Samsung, OnePlus, Xiaomi, and the rest of them. So if you're going to go for an Android phone, I'd like to bring up the next question. What is more important for you? Are you looking for a good battery? Or are you looking for camera? Do you want software experience? And this helps me narrow out down the choices you have. If you're looking for a good battery, I can look at the phones that fit into your budget and try to bring the best, the one that will give you the best battery life. If you want a good camera, I try to look for a phone that has other components like good um, processor, good battery, and also has a good camera. So it's a bit of mix, it's more dynamic. You can't really pick out one criteria that you use to narrow down your phone. It's usually based on choice and usually knowing your budget and knowing what you look for best in the phone really helps. For me, I like to have a phone that has a good software experience and has a good um, processor. So most times I lean towards Snapdragon devices. So and if I see a Snapdragon device and a MediaTek device, I tend to lean towards the Snapdragon device over the MediaTek device. I'm also I'm more of an Apple person, so I know there are few phones that will fit my budget when it comes to Apple, but in Android, it gets a bit difficult to pick out what phone you like. So that's my own guide. I used to picking out a phone, and I hope I helped you answer your question. Thank you. Greg here, and my only advice is to think twice. People often buy things on impulse and don't care about the consequences that will follow. So they realize it was an unnecessary purchase only after a while. My advice is to ask yourself before buying a phone, do you really need it? Sometimes we upgrade just because the new iPhone has come out even though our current phone is still a great daily driver. So yeah, look at all the hot new items through the prism of skepticism. Even though it may be boring sometimes, it can help you to save the planet you live on and help to save your budget, which is also very important. As for me, I developed a two-year upgrade system. Basically, it sounds like that. I buy a new phone every two years. Even though today phones can hold up up to three or four years without an upgrade, I think two years is a perfect timing. 
because at that point you can still sell it at a decent price. That's it, be responsible. Hi everyone, this is Peter of KidsGuide.com. Thank you so much James for having me in this video. So let's get into it. I will share with you guys my smartphone buying tips. Number one is check your budget. And if that budget of yours is enough, look for the best possible device that you can get for your money. For example, how would you do it? Number one is you do research. If you will do research on websites, for example, like gizguy.com and our other contemporaries in this field, you will be able to see the latest devices uh, for that particular price point that might fit your interest. And then number two, it is not all about the specs always. Also, you need to consider the design of the phone. You need to consider its features. You need to consider if you like the brand or not. You need to consider the after sales of this device. So again, it will boil down to research. And then while it is still not advisable as we are still under a pandemic, maybe you can visit the store that is nearest in your area and check if the device that you are interested with is uh, nice in the hands, if you like its color, if you like its texture, if you like its weight, and etc. Also, make sure to consider the speed of the device. Let's say, for example, you're a gamer. Go for a gaming smartphone. If you are a social media user, maybe some of those phones with mid-range grade specifications will be enough for you. But of course, if you can go for the highest end device possible, it will be better as they are the best in the market right now. So guys, that's it. Again, this is me, Peter of GizGuy.com, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I'm Fenson from Gadgetsu. Thank you, James, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this collab, and congrats to him for hitting 1,000 subscribers. Now, let's get started with some things to look out for when buying a smartphone. You can often choose between buying through a carrier or paying the full price for the unlocked version. Unless there's a really good deal on the carrier, I recommend purchasing the phone unlocked to stay free from the carrier. It makes selling, repairing, or upgrading the phone way easier. So if you have the extra cash, definitely buy it unlocked. Next, two things people often overlook is battery and storage. Make sure to research and choose a phone that can last long enough for you. It will save you from constantly needing to recharge. And same with storage. Make sure to get enough storage. I recommend at least 128GB for normal people and around 256GB if you take a lot of photos and videos. Lastly, make sure the brand guarantees software support for at least two years. This will ensure you have a phone that will run smoothly and have updated security patches for the years to come. A good example of this are iPhones, who regularly receive software updates for at least 5 years. And that is some of the tips I recommend you guys consider when making your purchase decision. Thanks again to James for having me on the collab. Stay safe and have a great day. Good day, you beautiful people. Welcome to Tech MNO, and I'm Isa of Isa Does Tech, where we do tech in your life in style. So today, James asked me for what my tips are for buying your own device or your own smartphone. And I have a few things. Number one, there is no such thing as a perfect phone. There's only perfect for you, for your own needs, for your own wants, for your own use preferences. So just because one smartphone is something that this other person likes, doesn't mean it is something that will relate to the things you like. That brings me to number two, and whenever you're gonna buy a new smartphone, I'd suggest that you research. Research not just from one source, but from many different sources. The beauty about having YouTube and having these different reviews is that you get input from different types of users, different types of people, and I'd suggest following people who align with the things you want on a smartphone. Number three, at the end of the day, I feel like you should just enjoy tech and not the other way around. Like sometimes people can get so uh, hell bent and caught up on getting the newest tech, getting the best tech, getting the biggest and bestest. But at the end of the day, tech exists to serve people. Tech, tech exists to serve you. So that being said, whatever tech you have, so long as you're able to use it well so long as you're able to enjoy it 
it's good tech. Oh, one last and final thing before I go. Um, this isn't supposed to be part of the top three that I was gonna talk about, but I feel like this needs to be said. Just because you don't have the best technology right now, let's say for content creation or for shooting or for doing whatever, that should not dictate on your output, on your content. The best content is one that's always engaging and one that's always insightful and one that tells your interesting story. So no matter what tool you have, aka no matter what tech you have, those are just things that you use. Those are just tools to create and tell your story. Thank you so much to our tech YouTuber friends for sharing their tips and advice on choosing your next smartphone. I would also like to encourage you to show some love to them by subscribing to their own YouTube channels. I will drop their links on the video description down below. And now I will share with you four of my own tips and advice on choosing your smartphone that fits your needs. My first tip is to ask yourself the question, what are my priority usage when I look for a smartphone? What is priority usage you ask? Well, that is my term on the things that you need to do on your smartphone on a day-to-day -day basis. Remember to always put the needs first, then the wants. And as Isa said, all of us have different and unique usages on smartphones. So answering that question will be a tailored fit for your daily needs. Because it's weird to suggest or get a gaming phone if you know to yourself that you're not a heavy gamer at all. Now, here are the things to look at and consider when choosing a phone. The first one is screen size. It could be a compact or small size or if you want to go, go big. Display could be an OLED variation or an LCD. It also has a new and trending refresh rates from 90Hz to 144Hz, so take that into consideration. Next is camera. It has a type now on both front and rear. There's an ultra-wide, zoom camera, macro, depth, or periscope lens on the rear, and in front camera, there's someone who puts only one, or rarity, it has two lenses. But a quick side note here, megapixel count is not always the best standard of having the best photos, but the sensor and the software processing is a thing to consider, especially in night photography. So I suggest to look for reviews or to go window shopping and test their cameras. The next one is storage. As much as possible, get at least 128GB of onboard storage and plus points if you need a micro SD card. Next is RAM. The best thing to get right now is at least 6GB of RAM, but 4GB is doable, however I prefer 6GB and above. Next is performance. This is one of the most important things to check on the smartphone that fits on your daily usage. If you're a heavy gamer or user, make sure to get a processor with a more focus on performance. I will just put the things right now on the screen. The best examples here for heavy users are the Snapdragon 700 and 800 processors. While on MediaTek, get at least the Helio P series or the Dimensity processors. The next one is battery. If you want to have a long-lasting phone that can cope up with your daily needs, the best thing to look out for is get at least 4,500 mAh of battery or more. Next is charging. Since having a big battery could be a chore if it's time to charge, make sure to get at least 18 watts of power output. The bigger number of wattages on the power brick, the better. But don't worry, it will not damage your phone very easily unlike what other people are talking about or telling right now. The next one is audio. This will be a personal preference for you. If you want to use wired, better look for a phone that has a 3.5mm headphone jack. If you want to go wireless, get at least the newest version of Bluetooth. At the moment, it's Bluetooth 5 or 5.1 are the best in the business right now. Next, check for the brand software upgrade support. Apple devices have at least 4-5 to five years, while Android devices usually have 2-3. to three. So if you're a person who doesn't upgrade your phone every 3-6 to six months, put this as a consideration. And finally, the last one is phone materials. In the glass protectors or the black glass screen, look out for at least Gorilla Glass 3 and above. On the chassis, the best thing is to have a metal frame, but polycarbonate materials are great as well. But again, it will depend on your preference and if you are the kind of user that you will use a case on your smartphone. Also, look for a phone that has an ingress protection or IP rating for dust and water resistance. My second tip is to check your budget. This could be the make or break decision for your needs. 
because in my opinion I don't believe that there's an overall phone or you are like the I need all of the features type of person as I remember from one people who asked for me what phones to get. Actually, these people are looking for a perfect phone which in, in reality there's no perfect phone. Remember that all phones, and I mean all phones, have their own strengths and weaknesses. So that's why I said a while ago to ask yourself the things that you will need. This is a chart breakdown of the different types of price brackets right now on the smartphone. Disclaimer, this is my own chart and this is the price bracket is for the new freely smartphones in the market. So there might be some incorrect informations here. The next step is research. Research, research, research. Give yourself some time to watch reviews from a wide range of reviewers and content creators to have an idea if the phone you want fits your daily needs. Because if you didn't give yourself some time, maybe you'll regret it in the end. Just like what I experienced before. And finally, this tip is an optional one, but brand bias, brand ecosystem, or preference is also a key factor on your purchase decision. I got quite a number of people who asked for suggestions, but they have some particular brands they prefer like Xiaomi, Realme, Samsung, and etc. because of different reasons. So if you have that, and check their reviews from it. For example, if you have an Apple devices like a MacBook, Apple TV, iPad, and Apple Watch to name a few, of course you will go to the iPhone route. And if you want to transfer files to your Huawei MateBook via your phone, you should get a Huawei phone too. Before we wrap up, I would like to ask you the question, what are your priority usage when looking for a smartphone that you will use on a daily basis? Let me know your answers or any questions or suggestions in the comment section down below and we can discuss or help you there as well. At the end of the day, always remember, the final purchase decision will always come with you. Proper research and laying out of the things you need, I'm pretty sure that your next phone is worth your hard-earned money. We hope this guide will help you on your next smartphone purchase and we hope you will enjoy it in the years to come. And that wraps up our video for today. If you again enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also if you want to know my daily driver phone, click the card right now and watch that video after this. And for more of the tech that you need to know, follow our social media accounts at TechMNO. Again, my name is James, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.